the TikTok DIY community has me consumed, you guys. I'm gonna start to give back, don't worry. Hey guys, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if it's your first time. And if it's your first time, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today's video I am super stoked for because we're jumping back into one of my all-time favorite DIY categories, home decor, which you guys should know by now, it's no big surprise. So a lot of the decor that I'm making can double for both coffee table stuff and then also bar console stuff. It's a lot of ideas I've been holding on to for quite a while. So we'll be going through four projects today. We will be aging, using the baking soda, um, painting technique, we'll be texturizing, we'll be doing all types of good stuff. So let's jump right in. I wanted to create this like DIY textured stone base and I keep seeing so many different creators um, put together. So I bought a bowl and a cup. Essentially, this is gonna be the goal of what we're looking for. So first things first, we need to attach this. I just have my glue gun and some E6000, so I will show you guys close up. I just have a plain cereal bowl and this tumbler cup. I got them both from Target. They were literally like a dollar a piece. The thing I love about this DIY is that you can use any plate and any bowl of your choice and come up with any unique shape. Um, so these are just the ones that I chose. E6000, as mentioned, I'm just going to take some and put that kind of in the center. And I'm also gonna add some hot glue. You don't wanna go too crazy, just enough to make sure that the two pieces will stick together well. And then, so we're just gonna take that. The great thing about this bowl too is I'm gonna kinda line it up where this um, outline is. I'm gonna set this aside to dry for a little bit before we move on to the next step. We are good, this has had enough dry time for now. Starting my paint mixture here, so I just have some acrylic paint. I'm mixing cream and white. Um, and then we're gonna add some of the baking soda to this as well. This base is gonna be kind of a two-step process because I want extra texture on it. So we'll start with this, let this dry, and then I'll show you guys the final step after. We're basically gonna be adding a nice textured spray paint to it. That's about good consistency. All right, and I'm trying to figure out the best way. I might just start with the bowl first, and then we'll make our way down to the bottom so I don't have to touch it much but we're gonna cover this entire thing in this thick paint, the outside as well as the inside. The baking soda makes the paint so thick, it really does like make it go a long way. So this would be a good texture within itself. I used this same technique whenever I did, I did like entry table way decor or something, I think I called it, I'll link it for you guys too. Let's go ahead and do the inside. It doesn't really matter like brush stroke wise because we kind of want the texture, but I will say try and get as much of an even layer on here as possible. So the seam where we attached the bowl to the cup, I kind of laid it on really thick just so we could kind of hide that. All right, she's fully painted. We're gonna set her aside to dry before we move on to the final step. Moving on to project number two. I know I'm look, I look like a welcome to my cooking show. We're not cooking at all. When I tell you guys that I've had these ideas for a long time, I'm really not kidding. But I bought these chains literally on Halloween sale last year. I got them for $2 a piece and I just had a vision. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with them. But if you guys have seen the coffee table chains at all, I'll go ahead and link a few pictures so that you guys can get an idea. But I thought how cool if we were to create kind of our own little texturized uh, or textured um, coffee table chain. So that's my intention for these. I really hope that they come out cute, but we're gonna be doing the whole baking soda and paint technique on them. So I have one I'm gonna do black and the other one I'm gonna do cream. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and cut off the bigger pieces on the end. I only wanna use that like middle section. So all of the smaller lengths is what I'm gonna be looking for. And it, they're hollow like on the inside. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a box cutter. I can't advise that you try this at home. I will probably end up cutting myself, but Hopefully you don't. I just want to cut through so I can like unlink it and take it out. You can free up the other chains. Okay, that was easy. Okay, one down, four to go. I mean, what? Three to go. I mean, math is not my forte. So our chains are broken free. This gives you a kind of good idea of ultimately the shape that I was looking for. I have some cream paint in here, but it's actually a little bit too dark for me, so I'm just gonna add some white of like the Craft Smart paint. You can get this stuff literally at the Dollar Tree. 
And then to this, it's a little thickened because I'm not gonna lie, I use some of the recycled baking soda paint. And depending on like the texture that you're going for, you can either add more paint if it's too thick, or you can add more baking soda if the texture is too loose for you. Um, but I will say the baking soda helps it dry a little faster and it gives it this like matte finish, which is kind of cool. So the, oh, the original paint that you start with doesn't necessarily have to be like a matte paint because it'll end up kind of coming out like that anyway. You want to make sure you mix so all the chunks are gone. And that's about good for me. So I think what I'm going to have to do is, to, because the chains are obviously all linked, I'm going to try and get as much from one side as possible, set that aside to dry, and then flip it and do the other side. So we will just start going to town. The thing that I really like about this technique is that it comes on so thick. I wanted the chains to have this like thick clay-like texture. And it's cool too, because you could honestly get away with like a good thick coat and not have to do so many. The only reason I'm kind of splitting it in half is so that I can get every nick and cranny of this chain. So that no matter which way you end up styling it, we don't have any like blind spots. But it's coming together really nicely. I kind of just decided to keep this little hook at the end um, clear of any paint so that I'm not making too much of a mess and I'm kind of using the tension to pull in between the chains so that I can really get in there. I think that's as good as we're gonna get. Oh, I'm gonna set this aside to dry. And we can move on to chain number two. This one we're gonna be making matte black, which I'm really, really into. I couldn't decide if I wanted one cream one or if I wanted one black one, so we're gonna do both. You guys can use, like I get like little samples from the hardware store. You can use either that um, or you can get like just the plain acrylic paint like I mentioned. Some of that baking soda. These are gonna be a lot easier to cover just because it's like the darker color. So if any of that like gray kind of shines through underneath, it's probably gonna be fine. Okay, I'm losing track of the products, but this is the final base. So this one is going to be an upcycle slash thrift flip. Little controversial because it's kind of cute, right? Like we don't mind it. But I actually have another one right behind me just like it, and I feel like I don't need two speckled faces. So I have other taupey dreams for this one. Um, so yes, you guessed it, we're gonna use the same texturizing baking soda paint technique. Um, so I have this taupe color, again, left over from like a little sample. So we're gonna make our mixture cover her, and then we'll move on to part two after. It looks about pretty good, definitely the color I wanted. So we're gonna set our side to dry and move on to step number two. Okay, up next for the next project, I have a bunch of piles of books in front of me. So one of my favorite pieces of decor are using books. And sometimes you wanna splurge and get those really cute coffee table books, but you really don't wanna spend um, and you want something that kinda just looks a little bit neutral. I came up with the idea, the idea. I came up with the idea to thrift some books and wrap them in whatever color, pattern, whatever you want. So I have a bunch of contact paper in front of me. And of course I went thrifting. You guys know I'm no stranger to that. I've done plenty of videos on that stuff. Um, but I picked up some books. Some, I kind of was just going for more of a shape of what I wanted instead of what they were really about. Um, shout out to Danielle Steele. I don't know who she is as an author, but I picked up a million of her books and I just really like the short stacked shape of them. So we're gonna be doing a few of those white. I have a like linen contact paper in front of me. Um, and then I also have this really cool black like wood grain contact paper that we're gonna be using for some of the smaller like thinner skinny books. Um, and they're really just used for stacking. So I'm gonna be styling the console behind me um, at the end of the video. So make sure you guys stay tuned with all of the decor that we've made today. Okay, as mentioned, this is the contact paper that we'll be needing. Aside from that, it's really just a pair of scissors and the thrifted book. So we talked about the shape when you guys go to the thrift store. 
um, the shape of the book and making sure that we're looking for something that kind of fits with what we want to do. Um, so you might want something chunkier, you might want something thinner like the other ones will do. The other thing to look out for though is to make sure it's hardcover. So first thing we'll want to do is remove this paper cover. You want to make sure that there's a nice hardcover for the contact paper to actually stick to. So take this. The easiest way that I found to do this, we're going to kind of wrap this old school style. So for you 90 kids or 90s kids, when we used to wrap our books in school, very reminiscent of that. So you kind of just want to give yourself about an inch margin to be able to put the contact paper into the flap. So from here, I kind of line it up. And then I flip it on its other side and then I give it another inch margin. So I'm looking at cutting along this line right here. And it's great because it has all of the measurements on there. So makes it really, really easy to kind of go through and cut. I got all of the contact paper, by the way, off of Amazon. I'll make sure to put all of the links in the description below, as always. So the other thing I'll do is, I kind of want to leave a, like an inch of margin from the top as well. I'm gonna measure this way also. So that's about an inch right there. So we'll probably cut along this line. So I'm gonna start from the back first. I have it lined up by the way. So I have my inch margin right here on this side and we're gonna peel the back piece and stick that on first. This stuff can get really, really sticky, so just handle with care. Okay, you wanna keep it lined up so we don't lose our space. I'm gonna flip it and pull it out from the bottom. So from here, before you kind of keep it permanent, you want to just do a nice pull, make sure it's on there nice and tight, do the other side. And then I kind of just like to press along the seams of the book, make sure it's kind of sticking everywhere it needs to stick. So here's how we're looking so far. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to just cut on each corner so that we can eventually cut this piece off and it'll make it easier for us to fold on the inside. So you want to open up your book and right where we cut, you're going to just bend that part down and then you kind of want to pull pretty tightly. So we've done that, stick that and do the same on the other side. You should have somewhat of a straight line once you guys kind of pull it down, see right here. Okay, make sure that's in. I kind of like to mess with the edging of the book to make sure that that's stuck nicely. And then we can finally do the flap along the side. So that's one side done. Flip over and do the same on the other. down and then now you're just left with those like two little pieces that we cut on the side so all that's left to do is really just cut those off and then I kind of just kind of bend them down a little bit but that's pretty much what you're left with so we went from like that bluish cover and now it's completely white. It even has like this really cool texture to it. We'll do another one just like that and then move on to the bigger books. So following the same exact process on a little bit of a bigger scale, we're gonna wrap these books in this really cool black, almost wood grain contact paper I was able to find. As always, all of the materials that I've used in this video will be linked in the description box below. You guys gotta check this one out.
Well, you guys, that is finally it for today's video. I'm absolutely obsessed with the new bar console and all of the DIY decor that we made for the video today. Let me know which one was your favorite in the comments section below. King. Thank you guys so much for watching today. As always, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys in the next one.